Hey guys and welcome to another video. Today we want to change the firmware paste on this Dell XPS 15 7590. It has an i7 with 6 cores and 12 threads. And first we want to do is do some before benchmarks and then we change the firmware pads, uh, paste and then we get we do some after benchmarking that we have comparable values. So yeah, let's make the benchmarks first. As you can see in the Cinebench R20, we are reaching 2366 points with maximum 100 degrees Celsius, 39 degrees, 17979, 96 degrees Celsius. Um, if you look to the Intel XTU 2 benchmark, we are seeing nearly the same. In terms of firmness. Let's save those numbers and then we will compare it <coughs> to the figures afterwards. Here we can see the back cover. Not much to see overall. Only a few torque screws that are T5s and under here as you can see are two Phillips screws. After I take them out we should be able to unistyle the back plate or the back cover. This is how the Dell looks like with the attached uh, back cover. We can see the heat pipes, the two heat pipes for the CPU and GPU cooling. And there for the four screws where, is, where this hold back. And there is also the M.2 drive and two sticks of 8GB DDR4 RAM. So let me take the cooler apart. And then we will see how the GPU and the CPU looks like. As you can see, I took off the cooler. Literally four screws that it came apart. And now we, we're gonna apply some thermal paste. I'm going to use Gelid GC Extreme. It's in my opinion one of the best thermal pastes that you can have. It's on tie with thermal glacially cryon out. So it's Will, it, it should nearly perform the best you can have on the market right now and then you will see after I put it back together <coughs> how my how the benchmark scores improved or not and how the firmness will be all right as you can see we have 2690 points um, so we bumped up the score by around I would say 10 to 15 percent without doing anything then changing the firmware paste which took literally like 10 minutes the other firm is afterwards I know that it changed a lot you might say but the thing is uh, the CPU was able to clock higher because there was more heat room in terms of temperature if you look at the power draw we can see the it's now now it's at one watt around with the old firmware paste it was uh, able to pull around the yeah, 70 to 80 watts and this time the CPU was in the power limit at least at the beginning with 90 watts I'm impressed that a C um, laptop CPU can pull 90 watts that's a huge amount and yeah let's see which score we will get on the Intel XTU side or benchmarks this is now the XTU2 benchmark, as you can see, 2416 points. I don't have the exact score in mind that we have before, but I assume that are also around 10% more. Well, uh, for now I'm pretty happy with the result. As you were able to see, even on modern laptops, it's a good thing to change your firmware paste. Um, of course, I used one of the best firmware pastes. But I also wanted to have one of the best possible scores. I could use liquid metal, but I don't know if I want to do this. Mm, since it's a new laptop with warranty and so, <laughs> you really want to spread liquid metal on it. At least for now, maybe in a, in a, new, in a couple of months or so, I don't know. We can see the cup tone tape which I used to prevent the liquid metal from dripping. And yeah, we, here we go further. Um, I mean, literally, you all guys knew an extreme overclocker 
just can't replace from a paste he has to do also other stuff and yeah that's what i did um i used additional thermal pads on the heat pipe cooling solution to touch with the back cover so i get um so i get a few more room or a thermal mass to get the heat off the cpu and so um i was using my thermal pad rest you know all i have left um, I also added liquid metal, I mean, what else, you know, <laughs> I saw the copper cold plate, so I was like, there have to be liquid metal on it, and yeah, now I also additional covered the completely, the complete heat pipe cooling system with thermal pads, which touch the back cover, like I said, like I mentioned, and yeah, I don't expect much here since the back plate is very thin and is only aluminum but it could help a bit i mean we are talking about a laptop it doesn't have any really good cooling at all so every watt which are uh, which is taken from the cooling construction um, should be enough let me boot up the laptop and then we will do some testings and compare you can see on the left side there is the thermal pad application which is also kind of okay. Um, <clears throat> we are reaching here around 90 degrees Celsius and the temperature is also really spread. So you have 90 degrees nearly here and 80 here. So 10 degrees difference, that's not good. You always want to have a relatively even temperature. And then we have the liquid metal application. As you can see here, that are also really spread at temperatures we have here 77 degrees and here 65 degrees so basically 12 degrees celsius between the cores and if you now look here uh, with the thermal pad uh, with, the thermal, with the additional thermal pads also we can see that we have really really even temperatures like uh, two two to three degrees celsius quad to core i would say and we are also not getting a single core over 70 degrees which is really really nice and uh, if we compare the average temperature it's also lower by around it's basically two and a half degree celsius lower so yeah quite happy now with the end result um i hope you enjoyed the video guys and maybe i could show you some cool results or so how it could end up being i would say leave down a comment or like you would really support me with that also with a subscribe and i would say see you in the next video